In this video, I want to look at the calculation of a loan amortization table. Okay, so let's look at this here. I have my Excel sheet open. And the first thing I'm going to do is to put a box that, that describes what can be found in the sheet. So to do that, I'm going to go to Insert, and then uh, I'm going to insert something here. So insert, insert, I'm going to do text box, insert text box. So here I'm going to put a text box right there, let's say. Okay, so calculation of loan AM O R T I Z A T I O N loan amortization amount borrowed let's say it's ten thousand dollars Interest rate. Five percent. There we go. And then loan to be paid back. in 60 equal installments at once per month. There. And let's make this text a little bit bigger. So here, how about 18? There we go. I'll shrink the box here a little bit. There we go. And uh, we can fix the color background here if we so choose, say, to be light gray, just like there. There, okay. So uh, that describes how to use a text box. And uh, now let me put a few other things here. I'm going to put, uh, again, I'm going to put principal. And I'll make that ten thousand dollars. So ten comma zero zero zero, and I'm going to here. Notice I hit return. Now I'm highlighting the box by clicking on it, and then I'll go over here to number, and I'll put currency. So ten thousand dollars, and then interest. Okay, and we'll put 0.5% there. So interest. Okay, so now what we want to do with loan amortization is we want to have a payment such that the loan is paid off exactly after 60 months. Sometimes with bank loans, the last month is different than the other months, the other. And so uh, we should be open to that possibility here. But let's try if we can make the 60 exactly equal monthly payments. So let me set up the spreadsheet. Okay, right here I'll put month. I'll put it right here, month. So we'll have a month and then every month we'll have a payment. And then part of that payment will be paying off interest we've accumulated on the loan. Part of that will go to reducing the principal. Principal reduction is what I'll call this column. 
Now notice that my typing takes up more space than is available in the column, so I can just make the column bigger there. Principal reduction. And then right here, I'll put um, principal. So we, we're, and we're going to start off with the principal, P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L, principal. So we'll say month zero, I'll call that month zero, to be our first when we borrow the money and we're going to borrow $10,000. And there we go, $10,000. And I want to make that currency. So currency, $10,000. And then we're going to make our first loan payment at the very end of month zero. Uh, I'm going to call it here, let's say, so... Um, maybe, uh, maybe I won't set it up that way. Maybe I'm going to call this month one and say at the start of month one, we start off with $10,000. Okay, so then we have, then we make a payment at the very end or very beginning of month one. That's when the payment will be due. And we're going to make 60 equal payments. So notice I have one, two. I'm going to click on one, shift click on two, and then I'm going to drag this down until that small number on the right of my cross says 60. And that'll be my 60th payment right there. So that's a 60 payment, 60. Uh, and part of that payment, for now, let's just guess. Let me guess my payment's going to be $200. I don't know if that's right or not. It's just a guess. And I will say, go back up here and click currency again, just to indicate that it's $200. Now, so, at the end of month one, say we make a $200 payment, part of that is going to be interest. How much will be interest? Well, we have an interest rate, and the annual interest rate is 5%. So over the course of one month, we pay one twelfth of 5%, because that's how much the interest would accumulate after one month or one twelfth of a year. So let's say the calculation that we want to put in here is equal to our principal there. And uh, the principal is uh, going to be multiplied by... Um, One twelfth of five percent. So I'll multiply by five percent. So that's this divided by twelve. So that's how much interest we pay. Notice it's forty one sixty seven. Now let me not put ten thousand here. Uh, let me uh, let me leave this out for the time being. I already have ten thousand up here. So the uh, uh, the principal is specified at the beginning of the table. Now I want to change this formula. Uh, the formula, I'm multiplying E12 times B11. Okay, I want to change that. What is E12 was what I had for $10,000 here. I want to replace E12 now by B10. So, or not e, uh, E14, sorry. So B10, now hit return. So there we go. There's our interest. Now the principal reduction, if we make a 200 month payment and the interest, the amount that goes to paying off the interest is 4167, the principal reduction is just the difference between our payment of 200 and the amount that goes to paying off interest. So our principal is going to be reduced by 158.33. 
And our new principal, then after we make the payment at the very end of the month, is going to be our original principal, which is $10,000, so equals $10,000 minus our principal reduction. There, hit return. So our new principal, when we make the payment, is just $9,841.67. Now we're going to make the same payment, the same $200 payment, every month. So let's see. If I click on this whole thing and drag it down, let's see if I the correct numbers get put into place. Well, notice this is obviously wrong. Okay, this looks wrong too. Um, so I I only want the payment to be two hundred dollars. So let me write that again. Two hundred. There, two hundred. The interest calculation is going to be equal to this. I'll put equal. It's going to be the amount that we knew principal amount, which is this, times the 5% divided by 12, that divided by 12. So that's slightly less now, $41.01. And now the amount that we're going to principal reduction is slightly more which is going to be the 200 minus the amount that goes to interest. And this is going to be equal to this amount minus the principal reduction. So there. So this is now our new principal after our second payment. So now let's try this. Now, if I take I could, I take this, highlight, drag down, what do I get? It still should be not 201, but $200. So I'm still not getting quite the right thing. So what, what's going on here? What's wrong? Let me, let me replace this again with 200. Okay, this amount, which is, let's try this, E14 times B11 divided by 12, so B11, you know what might be happening is it increments. Uh, when I drag down, it's going from B11 to B12. Let's see. Indeed, that's what's happening. And it's going from, so let's fix this. How do we keep our things from incrementing? Well, we can put, you just put dollar sign in front of everything, a dollar sign there a dollar sign there. We probably don't need the dollar sign in front of B because we're always going to be uh, pulling that number off of column B no matter what, even if we increment going down. But I'll put a dollar sign there anyway. And then E14, I do want this number to increment down. So this is 4101 here. E14 times B11 divided by 12. This is B15 minus C15. Is this right? C15 is this number. Okay, so we take um, this then should be the this amount, which is B15 minus this amount, which is C15, so that looks right. And then this should be E14, which is this amount, minus this amount, so that looks right. So let's highlight this again. And if I drag this down, I get 200. Okay, so let's just highlight the whole thing, drag it down and see what happens. Okay, now, Still, there's a mistake because this incremented on us. So that's a that's a no-no. So let me fix this again to 200. And we need to figure that out. 200. This should be, this is E15, which is this amount, times the interest rate, which is B11, which is that right, which is divided by 12. Okay, so... 
this looks like it might be right. The interest should be, looks like it's increasing. That looks right. And so these numbers look right. So if I click on there and there, and I drag down, then, okay, this is staying 200. This, let's check this formula, 3968. This should be E16, which is this amount, that's right, times B11, which is 5% divided by 12. So this looks like the proper calculation. This should be 200 minus that. B17 is 200 minus C17, so that's right. And then this should be this amount minus that. So that is E16, which is this, that's right, minus D17. So it looks like we have this right. Now, let me, let me just try this again here. I'll just click on this and drag down and watch this increases. So what we have to do in order to make that work I'll do Edit, Undo, Autofill. We need to click this and this both together because they're both 200, and that will prevent it from incrementing up. So now if I drag down, okay, it looks like I might be getting the right numbers there. Now let me drag it all the way down to the bottom, to month 60, which is right here. And, and uh, okay, so notice one thing that's happening here is... Actually, the loan is paid off right around here. Down here, the principal was just $36.77. And then when I made another $200 a month payment, I ended up with a negative principal. So these last few calculations are nonsensical, although the $200 payment was a pretty good guess. And uh, so uh, next thing I have to figure out is what should be my monthly payment in order to make these calculations uh, work out. Now, here I have 200. Now, I want to change this formula because what I'm about to do won't work if I just leave this at 200. So what I'm going to put here, instead of 200, I'm going to put equals. Let me just delete this here, delete it there. I'm going to put equals and then I'm going to click on this, there, and then hit return. And then this one is going to be the same thing, there. Now when I drag this down, notice it stays 200 because it's always putting in equal to whatever it was that went before. This is equal to B15. This is equal to B16. Now if I drag this down, all the way down to 60. It should stay 200, and it should always have the formula where it says equal to whatever was the cell above. And you'll see why I, I need that in a moment, I hope. Okay, so here is my amortization table. If I pay $200 a month, but I wanna pay the loan off exactly in 60 months, I don't want to pay too much or too little every month. I want to have it paid off exactly in 60 months. So this is a perfect application for Goal Seek. So I'm going to use Goal Seek here. And uh, Goal Seek, I might find, and where, do I, where am I going to find Goal Seek? Okay, uh, Tools. And here's Goal Seek under Tools right here. And uh, so... I'm going to do Goal Seek, and you'll see how I use this, hopefully. Goal Seek. Now, so what I'm going to do is I want to set the value in a cell to some desired answer. I'll say this is two value. I'm going to change the value in another cell. So in particular, I want my total principal at the end of 60 months to be zero. So I want to set the value of this cell to zero. Set cell E73, that's what that cell is, to zero. There, zero. By changing cell, 
And the cell I'm going to change is going to be the cell up at the top. Okay, but oh, look at that. Now I can't scroll up there. So let me just put okay. It's not going to like it. So E73, I'm going to set to zero. I'll just cancel this for now. So the cell I want to change is this cell, which is B14. So now let me go back to goal seek. Tools, goal seek. I want to check E73 to zero and then cell E14, I'm going to change cell E14. So I'm going to, this controls, this determines my monthly payment. I'm going to find my monthly payment that gets my final principal value equal to zero. Okay, and this is the cell for my final principal value. Now cell must contain a value. Which cell doesn't contain a value? Maybe I put in the wrong cell here. So let me hit cancel again. Okay, so it looks like I did because I didn't want E14, I want a B14. Ah, oh, stupid me. Okay, so let me try this again. Tools, tools, goal seek. I want to do this cell to zero and I'm going to change value in B14. Okay. And so, now, what does GoalSeek do? Well, GoalSeek basically searches through values to go here. And it ends up with 188.71 should be my monthly payment. And if I make that exact payment every single month, at the end of 60 months, when I make that payment, pay off an interest, I reduce my principal by exactly the right amount, and I end up with the principal balance of zero after 60 months. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. Now I could have gone in by hand and changed this value. Um, and it probably wouldn't have taken me too long to find it. But Goal Seek works perfectly in this application. So I hope this was a help and I will see you next time.